Welcome to Emma Madison's official roast of heart rate monitors. I'm just kidding. I don't really roast things. I've never really been good at it. So I'm just going to educate you on the worst options and why I consider them the worst and the best options and why I consider them the best. Now, before I proceed into the review of the heart rate monitors, I did want to touch on the fact that heart rate monitors don't just measure heart rate. We can also be tracking our calorie burn, which is important, as well as something called heart rate variability. If that's something you end up caring about, then that's worth tracking too. And don't worry, in this review, I did all the work for you. I will go through specific brands that fall under this category, but first I'm gonna go through. The worst heart rate monitor is something that uses a technology called PPG or photopleth... Hang on. <laughs> Photoplethysmography. It's a word. You can tell why it's called PPG instead of photoplethysmography. Just like photosynthesis, we know that it uses light, something from the light. So photoplethysmography is basically taking light and shooting it through your skin to measure the volume of blood. So the photo sensors that go through your skin are sensitive to the color of your skin as well. So the darker the skin or more melanin is going to hinder the effectiveness of the photons or light that go through your skin to measure the volume of your blood. So that's just one reason. Here's another reason why PPG isn't really for me. Most wrist-based monitors are PPG. The two most common and my least favorite wrist-based monitors are the Fitbit which is, in my opinion, the worst, and then the Apple Watch to follow. It's not just because of skin color that these are an issue. Wrist-based monitors will move a lot during exercise, and we can cause a lot of variability in our readings because of this. And that's just one reason. When we compare in the literature, we do find that the Fitbit is the least accurate for heart rate as well as for caloric expenditure. When compared to the Apple Watch, however, the Apple Watch is more successful at measuring heart rate, but not successful at measuring caloric expenditure, at least to the standards of research. And I don't know about you, but if something's not good enough for scientific literature, why am I using it on my own body? As a personal trainer, I strongly encourage my clients away from the Fitbit and even away from the Apple Watch if possible. Here's the downfall that are kind of also the pros of these worst options is that they're readily available and they are highly compatible with today's softwares, including iPhone products or Apple products for the Apple Watch is one of them. And the Fitbit is even compatible with the Apple products too. Fitbit also has a dedicated Fitbit app, which is seems really exciting because then you can track everything. You can track your nutrition, you can track your workouts, and that all sounds great. But if the accuracy of it isn't worth it, then why get it in the first place? Now, the Apple Watch, I will say, is a bit better of an option, and you can track your heart rate throughout the entire workout with apps such as a Nike Run Club app or even Runtastic. So these are good options for you to be able to track your entire workout. But in many cases, these two, the Fitbit and the Apple Watch, they're not going to easily show your heart rate throughout the entire workout, which is why I prefer other options that I will discuss soon. Now, before I move forward, I will touch on the fact that there is literature that says that PPG software-based monitors are effective, but they're not talking about the Apple Watch and the Fitbit. There's a lot of research out there that talks about the Apple Watch and the Fitbit compared to the next tech that I'm going to discuss. They're basically saying, in relation to the Fitbit, the Apple Watch is a little better. All the other literature is not on those. There are other research articles that are about head-based and ear-based PPG, which have been found to be a bit more successful and more valid than the wrist-based. Yet, I've never seen anybody running around wearing a headband that is PPG, and I haven't yet seen anybody with earbuds in monitoring their heart rate response or with earrings measuring it. This is more for scientific literature. Hopefully it'll become more mainstream, but those forms are a bit more accurate, just not readily available. All right, so enough about the worst. You understand my viewpoint on those. I do strongly advise against them because 
if they're not as accurate as another model, then why use it in the first place? So let's go to the best. The best heart rate monitors are the ones that use ECG or EKG electrocardiogram software. Usually all of these are going to be chest strap monitors, which is why I commonly will tell my clients, please use an EKG or ECG chest strap monitor. I know it seems very frustrating when I'm advising someone to use something that they don't already have because most people already have the Fitbit or they already have the Apple watch. And yes, I know they're convenient, but when it comes to your heart, I want accuracy. And not only that, when it comes to caloric expenditure, I want accuracy. I want accuracy with everything. A lot of my clients have weight loss goals. And if you're not accurately measuring how many calories you're burning, you may not meet your goals in a decent time frame, if at all. Same thing with my clients that are wanting to build muscle mass. They may be working out way too much with way too high calorie burn, and I'll need to adjust their meal plans because of that. These ECG-based monitors are going to be the most accurate at measuring calorie burn. But in general, go with any ECG or EKG based chest strap monitor. I'm going to be honest with you. They're probably pretty much all the same. They come from a manufacturer in China. And then believe it or not, people just pay to brand their own labels and then things get shipped here. So they're basically all the same technology with minor modifications. So I will give them that, but it's basically all the same. So now without further ado, I'll go through the three that I personally tested. This one, Polar. This is the first and the one that I recommend to most people. It is thicker. It feels thicker, feels more durable. I like the way that it connects best. So I'm going to compare the Polar. I'm going to compare the Garmin as an honor honorable mention at the end, and I'll explain why. And I'm going to compare this one called Power Labs, which you probably never heard of. This one has a great interface but for the Polar Beat app where you can track your total workout, the heart rate across the entire workout. You can track your calorie burn per workout, which is really helpful. Uh, and also it's really cool to be able to see the zones for your heart rate, except the problem is they use an old formula that is not updated in their back end to create the zones. For many individuals, it drastically over predicts or under predicts, depending on your age, your theoretical maximum heart rate. So I do strongly recommend checking out my video playlist on cardiovascular training uh, as far as being able to calculate your own zones. Otherwise, if you're in one of my programs, then I have a calculator where it does it for you. So don't rely specifically on the interface for the colors, but I will say it's a great feature. I just wish I would update the formulas in the back end to be more scientifically accurate at this point in this day and age. The cons about this one. I have had so many problems with connection among all my clients, basically. So I haven't had a problem, but between some other members of my family and a lot of clients, it's finicky with its Bluetooth connection. However, it's also because most people, including myself, don't take it off the strap. So I will give it that the battery dies faster if you leave it on the strap. And nobody, this, this is going to get lost. If you're not used to keeping things places or you lose things easily, like keys, you're going to lose this. And so you want to make sure you're unclipping it from the strap because that's the only way it turns off. And that goes for all EKG or ECG based chest strap monitors. Unclip it. It was not too apparent in the instructions. I figured it would have been. And personally, I felt really dumb because I had left it on for a very long time. And I finally realized that because I thought, why am I going through batteries so much? I figured the moment it touches my skin, it would turn on. That's also why connection is not the best is because all of my clients were doing the same thing I was doing. I was leaving the, the monitor on the chest strap. Make sure you take it off because it can decrease the connection, but it's still a pain sometimes to connect with Bluetooth. That makes this one sound really bad but it's excellent. It is really excellent. When you, when you use it, you get addicted to using it. However, my personal favorite as of now is this one, Power Labs. 
The pro with this, in addition to the fact that it is my favorite, is that it is the cheapest. And that's why I'm saying to you that most, most of the time, the EKG or ECG-based chest heart rate monitors are going to be basically interchangeable as long as they pair with an app that is going to track your heart rate across your entire workout and your calorie burn. So check those two things because it's very annoying to get a band that does not track your calorie burning or does not pair with an app that does so. When it comes to Power Labs, it pairs with a wide number of apps. It can compare with Strava and something called Wahoo Fitness, which I actually have. And what I really like about it is that a light comes on when it touches your chest. And I like that because it shows me something's working. <laughs> Polar, that doesn't happen. You just have to wonder if it's connected and then you see a heart rate and it gets a little concerning for me because of how they connect that I don't know if it's actually mine, uh, my heart rate, if I had, you know, uh, my husband has one too and we kind of can't use them at the same time. So it's a little bit weird when it comes to that with the Polar. This one's very straightforward. I have it connected the, to the Wahoo app. And in these apps, or at least the Wahoo, you can see your heart rate throughout the entire workout. You can record it, you can save the information, and you can see your real-time heart rate. You can also see your pulse, or which is or your resting heart rate, the lowest, the maximum, and calorie burn, which is extremely important. So I really like this one. It's also lighter weight. So to some people that might seem, oh, it just feels cheap. It's the same technology. <laughs> and uh, just so that way you guys know, I am not an affiliate for any of these brands. I, however, am an Amazon affiliate. So I will include the links to these in the description. All of my recommendations, I do receive a small kickback, which is equivalent to the amount of a half of a taco for me. If you would like to buy me a taco, I greatly appreciate it. I'd be happy to have a taco. Honorable mention is actually Garmin. And that's because I might be at fault for this. Um, it is extremely hard for me to figure out. I know some of you might be laughing because maybe you have this one and it works really well for you and that's great. Like I said, all EKG, ECG is kind of interchangeable. I have the Garmin app and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to get the workout to record. Most of my clients are mature adults. They are over 40. I have a lot of clients in their 60s. So in my decision-making process as a trainer, I also want something to be extremely user-friendly and tech-savvy, or at least uh, for individuals that are not as tech-savvy. Um, and the fact that I can't figure this one out in less than five minutes is an indicator to me that it's a little too challenging. I know that sounds pretty bad, but it's the truth. You want something to be really easy. And this one took me two minutes. It was simple. I just made sure that the battery did not have the little paper on it. And I strapped it on and I opened the Wahoo app and it connected. And it said, do you want to connect this? Yes, I do. And then it connected. And that was that. And it is still connected and it is fine. <laughs> I did not have that lock with this one. This one was a bit more challenging. There were a little loops to jump through. So that's why it's second place, first place, and honorable mention because I still haven't figured it out. I will say, though, that this one connects with the main Garmin app. So if you're already familiar with Garmin, maybe this will work for you. But you really want to make sure that you can just track your heart rate across your entire workout and also real time as well as your calories. It is also compatible with an app called Training Peaks, which will offer some insights as well at the end of your workout. And this one is the most expensive. It's, it's an honorable mention, but some people really have brand loyalty to anything, especially Garmin. I don't have brand loyalty to anything. Um, I just want what works. One note to end on, I will share that a lot of scientific literature that relies on heart rate data does rely on the polar monitors as an example. The polar is referenced in a lot of literature. So that's one of the reasons why I trusted it initially. After learning a bit about the manufacturing in China and with Alibaba, I started to consider, hey, maybe the any of these EKG or ECG or basically the same. Uh, that is an opinion on my part that is not supported by scientific literature, but you want to make sure that you're using an interface that is easy to use, but you can also see your heart rate in real time, your heart rate across the entire workout after it's recorded. You can store that data and you want to be able to see your calorie burn as well. And of course, it's beneficial to see the maximum heart rate that you got to also and your average heart rate. And last but not least, the price. <laughs> 
So to summarize, the cheapest and best is Power Labs, in my opinion. Great for price point as well, still good quality. Kohler. Most expensive, hard to figure out for me, but just because I'm not a Garmin person, but still worth noting. To compare with some of the wrist-based, just for context, they're way, the wrist-based are way more expensive. Fitbit has a wide range. It can be somewhere between $20 and then even upwards of $700 for some of them. Uh, very expensive, but wide range, not accurate at all. So why? And then the Apple Watch, of course, it's convenient. Many people already have the Apple Watch, but average price in that range is around $300 depending on the model. So none of those prices compare to the EKG, ECG. The, the more accurate heart rate band chest strap monitors are all less expensive than the inaccurate wrist-based. As always, remember, this choice is a personal preference. It's an important decision, and this is your decision. So these, of course, are my opinions, but they're also layered in with scientific literature that I have read through on the subject and my own personal experience trying these products. One last disclaimer I will leave you with is that even if you're excited and you buy your heart rate monitor, now you got it and you're good to go as part of your training programs, make sure you don't rely all the way on just your heart rate, especially if you are on beta blockers or medications that alter your heart rate response. I strongly recommend layering it with other factors of exertion. I do have another video all about this as well. So that way you can ensure appropriate, efficient, and safe cardiovascular and strength training programming. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, drop a like because it really helps me as a creator. I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you. And if you're looking to jumpstart your training with better guidance, I do offer pre-made programs, including nutrition programs that I have to say, it's very crucial. If your goal is health, nutrition is everything. So I do have both training and nutrition programs if you want to check them out. Uh, otherwise, enjoy your training and always remember your health is an investment and not an expense. And don't forget to check out the rest of this cardiovascular series. I do have it all about how to calculate your heart rate zones, as well as how to use those. So check that playlist out as well.